and welcome to the Quilted Hug Project. My name is Kim and my partner in this project is my mother Wendy. Um, before we get started on how to make a quilted shawl, I'd like to give you a little background on how we came to this project. It was the summer of 2015 and a fellow quilter was taken ill and she wanted to sell her stash. And the um, initial idea was she wants to just sell it, you know, piecemeal. And uh, we said to her, would you like to sell it in bulk? And she said yes. So we bought her entire stash. I drove to Vermont and filled an entire eight foot bed full of fabric. I brought it home and mom and I started talking about, wow, we've been really, really blessed with a lot of fabric. What are we gonna do to pay it forward and, and share this blessing and our passion of quilting? So we decided that we would make lap quilts and quilts in general and donate them. Then I was having dinner one evening with a friend of mine who's an administrator at a nursing home and she said to me, she says, you know what they really need? They need something to go around their shoulders. So I came back, discussed it with mom. We made a couple. We weren't too terribly happy with our design at that point. So we kept having more and more conversations. My mom had some really, really inspirational ideas as to what she felt needed to happen within the shawl. One of the things that she really wanted was something that felt nice and secure and huggable um, when it wrapped around your shoulders. Her other must-have was the pockets on the inside. So those two factors were pretty easy to incorporate once we got to our design. As I had the conversation with other friends, um, one was a breast cancer survivor and she said to me, it would be really important if somebody wanted to use this while they were having their treatments to have access to the port. And therefore the nice open neckline, the Velcro, all really nice, easy access. The other thing that was important to one person said that the length in the back of the shawl needed to be short so that there was no bunching, so sores would take place. So, you know, it's just above the butt in most cases. So those were some really key factors. So we made about a half dozen um, shawls and then we were pretty happy with the design features that we had incorporated. Next thing was, okay, how do we distribute these? So our local church that we're both members of, United Church here in Bernardston, we went to the minister and I said to him, I said, you know, here's our project, we'd like to distribute them, no problem whatsoever. But he says to me, he says, what are you gonna call yourselves? What is this project? And thank you, Reverend Neal, for um, coining the Quilted Hug Project because it really is about giving someone a hug on a bad day letting them know that someone is there to, to think about them and, you know, have some joy. So we've been making them for a little over two years now. And mom and I always joke, how wonderful would it be to walk into a nursing home and see staff that are wheelchair bound, just all in bright, fun, vivid, shawls, keeping them warm, but yet spreading some joy. So think about that as you, you know, go forward with your own creations and donations with this project. The other thing that is important to note here is how did this all come to be from a, you know, public standpoint? Mom and I have been making them for almost two years now and my sister who has created our Facebook page and does most of the online support for us said that we had to take a picture of every single one that we did. And we did. We complied with this request and blessings be that that, that was a very, very good suggestion. So on our Facebook page you can see every one that we have ever made for inspiration um, in your own creations. So. That was really important um, and I'm glad we did it in hindsight. So the next step would be that we are really ready to share with the, the general public and how do we put these together. So a lot of you have asked for a tutorial, so here I am. 
Um, we're going to start how to put it together, where the creative process comes. The one thing that I would ask of, of you is to please use your scraps. This is the best scrap project there is going. Um, there's only been, I think, two, maybe three that we've actually purchased fabric only because it was for somebody specific that had a special interest or um, really wanted it to speak directly to that person's passions. But as you look at the photos, you will see so many different ideas and creations that are really easy to, to work with. And by all means, it is so stash worthy that you can pull your best creative ideas together and come up with some pretty wonderful things. So bear with me, we're going to get this together and we're going to go and make a few quilted shawls. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, here we go. We're going to start by talking about three different design factors that we have with the um, different shawls. One of them is to do your strips multiple different ways, um, colors. I just 45 them all together. Lots of strips of, of excess and just general fabrics that I pull all together. One thing to be mindful of is how it's going to look when you finish it and roll it around. A lot of them you will see online that I've used solid colors in stripes like this. But as I said, please use scraps if you don't have lots of long scraps and you just have little scraps and you want to piece them together. So here's what you're going to be looking at essentially when this design factor um, has been completed. I'm not going to trim this one quite yet. I'm going to show you a couple other design factors. And then we'll talk about how do we trim this to get the desired shape. The next one is stripes. This one is very going to be beautiful when it's all set and done. Now this is 33 strips going across. They are 34 inches long and some of them obviously are a little longer, but you want them at least 34. And the reason I say 34 is it allows you to trim, um, trim your ends and get a good straight edge. Now this one, please plan accordingly because what happens when you fold this for a finished product, you need to make sure that your sides come together and it, it runs accordingly. Then the next one is one that I've already trimmed, but this is one of the fussy ones that my mom has done all of her beautiful, beautiful handwork on. And I'm going to show it to you this way first. So we have across the top, unfinished, needs to be 66 and a half inches wide and from top to bottom needs to be 32 and a half inches. So those are your key when you're doing your initial big squares, whichever way you do it, those are the big dimensions, 66 and a half by 32 and a half, no matter what your design is. Now, this one, wait till you see this, is Wendy's beautiful, beautiful handwork. And if any of you are older quilters or remember when your grandmothers and mothers made our dresses when we were little, they used to have hen scratch um, across the bodice or around the bottom. So this one does have all the hen scratch that she's put into it. You will notice that I did make these a little smaller and I broke my two inch strip up into one inch just to, to add a little variety. Still comes out to the same dimensions when it's all said and done. 66 and a half by 32 and a half. So here we have this one um, that's already trimmed. So next I'm going to show you how to trim up 
the other two to get to the next phase. We have our fabric. We have, let's just recap. They're two and a half inch strips, raw, all sewn together. They are 66 and a half inches long, and that's where we're going to do our trimming now to get our true um, 66 and a half. So what I've done is I've just folded this in half, and now I'm just gonna bring it up just because it gets me a little more accurate here. So I'm on the zero mark there, and half of 66 and a half is 33 and a quarter. So that's what I'm going to cut my next cut on. So now I have a true 66 and a half inch width. I don't have to be concerned with the 32 factor from a trimming perspective because each of these strips were two and a half inches to start with. You always are using a quarter inch seam. So now I have 66 and a half by 32 and a half. The next measurements are maybe a little more difficult, but let's just kind of walk through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark these so you can see where I'm going from a little easier. The pocket measurement when you are coming in from the side is six and a half inches wide. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there in case it's easier for folks to see or whatnot. Then I mark, mark my line on the edge. And I don't use blue tape all the time, I just use my fabric marker and go from there. The next measurement is the base. So, I need to find my center again. Okay, so these are my arms, this is my base. So the base at the base of the shawl is 14 and a half inches wide. So I need seven and a quarter. Well, let me do this so you guys can see a little easier. I'll mark that. Seven and a quarter. I'm just going to roll that because it needs to be to the edge. The tape is a little deceiving here. Our next cut, okay, now I've got it on two different sides, so give me just a quick moment. To make sure that these are lined up as well. And again, this is just so that I can show you with a little better ease what you are looking for here. So six and a half, where it ends out on the fabric. Now you can do this with your rulers at and use two of this, this type of ruler together. 
I have made so many and it just made sense because it's a little easier for my purposes. Went out to the shed, stole a piece of trim board, nice long straight edge that I've got. So now I'm going to cut from the corner of where I've marked from my bottom base of the back to where the pocket is going to be. And I'm just going to Now a lot of you are going to say, wow, that's a lot of waste. That's a lot of waste, you know? But what I would say to you is I have all of this now chopped up into little pieces to make a um, another quilt or other projects that I like. A lot of random factors going on with that. So now that we've done that, you can see where the shape comes into play. And I'm going to repeat it because it's important. 66 and a half by 32 and a half. And that's the shape you will have when you're done. And again, fold over. And there's that one. Now the next one is a slight bit trickier from a trimming perspective because we have a very long stretch of raw edge. And we're going to get this as square as possible before we make any cuts whatsoever. it up on one of my um, my lines here and then I'm going to I know I've got it straight going across so I will make that cut new blade too. There we go. So our next factor is that we need to make sure that we are now at 32 and a half inches from top to bottom. Again, so I'm lining this up on the zero side. I don't typically have as many loose ends as this, but for whatever reason, when I was putting this one together and was cutting fabric, I had a lot. I'm going to pause this a second and get this one wasn't cooperating quite so nicely as far as getting it to lay out in a folded manner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do several cuts um, on this one. And so 32 and a half. And I'm just going to do several cuts along the edge because I know I've squared the top up.
Now, if you look online, you will see some of the first ones we did with this particular design element featured. And I think, if my memory serves me right, some of them we only did two colors, and others we did a third color in it. And they are so striking. Um, they have a lot of yellows in them, is, um, is where my thought is going with that. There we go. So now we are back to 66 and a half by 32 and a half, and we are square. We are going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to measure in six and a half inches. Again, this is black fabric, so make it a little easier for everybody to see and mark. We are going to go back to our mid mid mark Because the total length at the base is 14 and a half, we need seven and a half to be our mark, two, four, six, somewhere within the square. up again now that I've moved it around too much. The important part of this one is the lining up, as I've said several times, but I can't say it enough. So we are 14 and a half inches there. This rolls around. And our stripes match up divinely. So now we've got them cut them out. The next phase is to get our polar fleece and get them put together. So bear with me and we'll move on to the next phase. Okay, the inside of the shawl is made from polar fleece. Um, chose polar fleece because it is very flexible. It's a quick, easy um, finish to the project. It's warm, it's really warm. If any of you have your favorite um, polar fleece sweatshirt or shirt that we wear in the winter time. And I always buy my polar fleece in two yard segments. What I would say to you about polar fleece is watch for the sales. This time of year in the fall, it is abundant. I mean, it's 50 to 70% off in a lot of case scenarios. 
So just keep your eyes out. It becomes really cost effective if you're donating a lot of them. What I would also let you know is that for every two yards of polar fleece it makes two shawls. So what I have here in front of me is two yards of polar fleece folded in half and then folded in fourths. This measurement don't get too hung up or too fussy with because there's a lot of play when we lay these out. The um, Part of the design factor was to use our fabric wisely when it came to the polar fleece and the fact that there are no seams other than the pockets on the inside. So two yards is 72 inches. Polar fleece is typically about 59 to 60 inches wide and we want a square piece of polar fleece. So I cut off 11 and a half to 12 inches, whatever your comfort zone is, you're going to be fine either way. Like I said, there's a lot of wiggle room with this. This is your pocket, so please don't lose it, don't cut it because I will show you what we're going to be doing with that in a little bit. So, set that over here. So, now we have our 60-ish inch square piece of polar fleece. So we're going to open it up all the way. What we're going to do is we're going to fold it corner to corner. Now, I am very fortunate that I have this beautiful kitchen bar that I can work on. If you don't, um, you know, a ping pong table, the floor, whatever you need to, to stretch this out and flatten it out. Again, don't worry about it matching exactly because in the next phase, you will see why I'm not getting super fussy with that. So what I do, lay it out. I know you can't see me off camera, but here I come. I just cut right along this fold line. For another day. What happens next is we're going to sandwich. And I'll do the black one first. And when I first started doing this, and I would probably still to this day do this, um, I'm only doing it out here for you guys is I lay this on my bed only because it is so much easier to have a really nice big flat surface. Try to stay about an inch from the top and maybe an inch or two from the sides. But that's the whole beauty of this. It gives you wiggle room. There's no exact I must have this lined up case scenario. Smooth it out. Now, if you don't have a walking foot for your machine, don't worry about it. Because I did the first 50 without a walking foot. And my mother says, why don't you use my walking foot? And I was like, well, that's a really good idea. And it definitely um, was a smidge easier but definitely not a necessity. So, how I quilt this. 
two things. Choose your bobbin thread to match your polar fleece and your top thread to whatever is complementary to your top. Do you want it to stick out? Do you want it to blend in? Again, that's a real personal quilting um, preference. So some of them I've, I've done it both ways and just depends on how busy things are or are not. When we have our stripes going this way, just quilt on each side of the seam, both sides. And that's all the quilting that it's going to be required. And here's the really cool easy part. When you start on the edge and roll in to the center, and hopefully I can show you guys this a little easier from this direction. I just kind of fold it in and roll into the center. And as I quilt, let's just say that this polka dot is my center. I would be doing my seams and then I go all the way in one direction, roll it back up and go all the way in the other direction. I have found no problems getting this in my machine um, whatsoever. It's got ample room. What I am going to suggest is that you start on the polar fleece when you go to stitch and stitch all the way through. A, and I have a whole bunch of these all rolled up like this in my office, ready to quilt. The next one I'm going to show you is just slightly different in how we roll it up and quilt it. And again, I would probably take the time to remove all these threads, but I want you guys to get the gist of this. Exact same thing inch to two inch variance all the way around. Don't have to be exact. That's what I love about this project. And see, if you can see from where you're at, I've only got a less than an inch here. I've got almost three there. So let's shimmy this over a little. and flat because of the way we're going to quilt on this I'm going to have you roll from the short end and roll in now this seems like a really really long piece to have to sew and manage this is what I do when I'm sewing this through. I put this piece up and over my shoulder so there's not as much pull. And then I start going through my sewing machine that way. And as you get to the smaller end of it, it isn't um, as difficult to handle. Uh, so now I'm going to go sew these together and then I can show you what the next step is. Okay, hope you're still with me. Okay, we're on to the next step of the uh, quilted shawl. So what I have done is I have quilted as I explained on each side of the seam line. So, and as every good quilter should have, a bunch of strings. So as you can see, all the adorable little lines um, and at the top all my strings which get cut off during the trimming process. Next step is to trim. And we're just 
just going to go around our fabric. Need to square up a little bit because some of it's shifted. That's okay too. Trimming is done. So the next step is our pockets, and that's a question a lot of people have been having a lot of questions with. So these two are your front pieces. Let's fold this back again so we understand. These are your front pieces, and the pockets get inlaid under here. So. Remember when I had you cut off that great big long piece of polar fleece um, from the 72 inch two yard piece? This is your pockets for two of the shawls. So we're gonna cut it in half. And again, we're setting that aside because that goes with whatever shawl I make next. Now we have our pockets. It's approximately 30 inches by 12 inches. And again, this one, I am going to cut in half as well. And again, exact is not crucial here because it trims up quite nicely within your um, within your shawl. So placing your pocket and taking your shawl and you want this to be about six inches up from the bottom. I know my stripes are two and a half inches so I am going to go just a little over six inches. Important that both edges be inclusive in this. Just do a quick pin here. Okay. 
So now we've got to stitch this on. What I do is from the corner edge, I take my fabric markers, draw a line up until I get to that six and a half inch or so mark. And what you're now capturing underneath is this binding. So please be mindful of that. We're going to start here. We're stitching up, stitching over to this corner, back down, around, and up. This opening is now your pocket on the back side. Once you've done that, you can trim it. And I've done that with the purple. And wow. I've done it. Here is the purple one. Now you really get to see the lovely, lovely handiwork up close. So we've got the pocket laid underneath, and now we've put the front corner on it. The a measurement it from the base here to where I have the top here is approximately six to six and a half inches. Depending on your design, you can be flexible with that. Um, calculation. Now, what I've done here is I want you to start sewing from this point right here. You're going to sew up till you get here and what's underneath there is that top binding that you can see there underneath. You're going to sew across. I'm a little out of line here, but you're going to sew across. So what you're catching is the um, is the binding and not just polar fleece so it's really nice and sturdy get to this corner come down cross the bottom come up and then you're gonna stop right there up, so over down across on the back it will look like that here is your pocket this step is now completed. You're just going to take the excess and trim it off. And you are done. So as you drape it over, you can sneak your hand or your tissue in under the pocket. So that step is now complete. So what we have next to deal with is our binding. The binding, again, I do two and a half because I've kept it really consistent all the way through the project. And I have about nine yards of binding that included any binding that you would need, typically I match what is um, on the outside, but this time I just went different. What I typically do is start somewhere on this angle edge. I've got my two and a half inch binding, ironed in half, line it up and sew it around. And then the next part is to hand sew it over. So I'll be back in touch when I get this all sewn on. Binding is done. And as you can see, we um, do do a little pressing um, once the binding is on, just to kind of roll it over and get it to go into place nicely. The one thing I am going to caution you is polar fleece is not to be ironed. So I would just use a low to medium heat in order to press this into place. And as you can see, the pockets are all nice and snug. And once you have sewn the binding over, all the raw edges are encased and your project is on the home stretch of being completed. The only thing left to do is a tab. So if you are great with a machine and machine binding, by all means, go ahead and do that. Mom just does a beautiful job and our preference is to um, sew it down by hand. The one thing I am gonna make a correction on, it was not nine yards of binding, it's six yards of binding that will complete the project. 
So all that's left to do is put a tab on it. So we'll get this sewn down and do the tab next. Do the final step, which is to make the closure tab for the shawl. I, a lot of times, will use my leftover two and a half inch pieces. Obviously, this is too big for the tab because the tab's measurements are three by eight unfinished. So this is way too big. So what I do is I sew the two strips together and then measure over an inch and a half from each side and cut. And this center seam comes into play later. So once those are trimmed, you're going to sew. You're going to sew around each side leaving a nice little opening here. I also trim the edges so that the corners lay nice and flat. Now this great little tool that I have here in my hands is just a skewer from your kitchen. Nice tiny little one is that goes. Turn this inside out. I don't typically use the pointy end because that's going to pierce your fabric. This works quite nicely. It's nice and small. gets into all those corners. Okay, so then once you've done that, you'll just do a quick couple of hand stitches and close that up. Now you have your tab. Once your tab is complete, you're going to be putting your Velcro into it. On this one, I know it's really hard to see because I used black on black, but the next one will be easier to see. So, and I do a decorative stitch. You can just do a square stitch. That's absolutely fine. So now our finished product is two and a half by seven and a half, and that's your tab. When putting the tab into the shawl, I don't put it at the very bottom because of the pocket and I start right above the pocket. You can be a little flexible however you want to do that. Here's one of my tricks in knowing how to place it. Obviously it's about a quarter of an inch in from the seam. But when you have this fold line, do it this way, you know where the outer edge needs to be because that's where the halfway point is and you obviously want the halfway point there. Now, I've sewn this one in. You can see on this one, I just did a plain stitch around the edge. No need for any decorativeness. Next important piece here at the bottom. Line those up and in this one it's pretty easy because it goes across. Then I take and I put this actually on here because I know that that lines up and again if you want to double check yourself I then pin this down and stitch this side hence you are done so when you are done this is what it is going to look like this one has a lot of detail only because this one is very fancy a lot of detail work that my mom did I wanted it to really show so you've got your both sides are adhered. The one thing I would say that I always do too is I put the base stitching on the left hand side because unless you have somebody you know is left handed because when you're right handed and you bring this over it's easier to just quickly attach that. So there you have it. You have your your tabs sewn down on both sides. There's a space in the middle, the seams in the middle, and then it just rips apart and pulls together very, very nicely. 
Okay, let's just recap the numbers one more time. So when you're starting out, you're going to have a finished piece, 66 and a half by 32 and a half. These are all unfinished measurements. You're then going to trim based off of measuring in six and a half inches on each side, coming down to the base, which is 14 and a half inches. And as I showed you in my example, I do fold it in half whenever I can. It just saves you another step. So it would be seven and a quarter that you would be cutting from here to here. But long as when you are finished, you are 66 and a half by 32 and a half, six inch on the pocket side, and 14 and a half on the base side. Then your polar fleece is 60 by 60. And again, you're cutting on the diagonal and you're getting two pieces from it. Your polar fleece pocket. Because when you initially cut, took your two yards of polar fleece and you cut that piece off, you cut it in half and then in half again, your pocket is going to be 12 by 15 and you need two of them per cape. So your piece is 12 by 15 before you sew it on, then you trim as we discussed. Your tab unfinished starts out at 3 by 8. And again, please remember that all seams within this project have been done with quarter inch. Okay, now we're done. The shawls are all ready. They're ready to be gifted. As you can see, this one with its fancy, lots of detail, um, hand embroidery, fancy stitches, all fun, part of the process. This one, very, very scrappy. Very simple um, square closure on the tab. Then this one with its horizontal stripes, very sharp, very elegant. If you'd like to see all of the ones that we've completed, you can find those photos on Facebook or on Pinterest. Both are listed under Quilted Hug Project. Just be sure on Pinterest you're looking for a board by the name of Quilted Hug Project. Mom and I just really want to say thank you for taking the time to check this project out. We really hope that you um, can make one and bless someone and make their day and give them a little bit of a hug as well. Please remember that this is a pay it forward project, not for profit project. So please feel free to share the instructions with anyone or this video. We really do appreciate it and thank you and have a great day.